So I got this question from Hieronymus Agung. He said, hey, JP, could you please make some sample tutorials to make an image transition like this? And he linked to a dribble shot by Julio Cosquito. And it's this really awesome like travel site web experience. I really love what's going on here. There's a lot to unpack, um, but I'm loving the full width imagery and this fixed sidebar and the really smooth motion. And I like how this designer is using motion strategically to sort of draw your attention to different things, um, particularly the imagery here, like these wipe and reveal effects of these images. It really draws your eye to the imagery. And that's sort of the point of a site like this, right? Like you're trying to sell the place. So imagery is really important and that motion is really helping elevate the imagery. And aside from that, you know, there's just really great, you know, spacing work here, typography, layout. This designer clearly knows what they're doing. It's gonna be a lot of fun to try to recreate, I think. Um, if you look at this designer's work, like you can tell like they know their shit. Um, lots of really cool landing pages with really striking imagery and motion to really bring it to life. <laughs> this one, I would hate to be the developer trying to bring this together. Um, but yeah, good on this designer for you know thinking outside the box and creating some really striking visual experiences here. So they clearly know what they're doing. This is the one we're going to be taking a look at. Now I'm gonna be animating this in Envision Studio. It looks like this designer probably did this in After Effects. I can almost guarantee it. Um, and I preach interactive prototyping over you know, designing in After Effects just because it's more valuable, right? You can actually put this in the hands of a client or a user to test. You can get some feedback on it. You can actually test the look and feel with the intended gestures. So let's see if we can really push the limits of Studio to create something awesome like this. So let's head into studio and I got a head start. I already went ahead and pretty much copied this designer's work, just kind of recreated it from scratch. Um, so this is theirs. This is just like a screenshot of, of their design. And here's my attempt at recreating it. I couldn't obviously find the exact image that this designer used, but oddly enough, I was able to find pretty much the exact same shot of this mountain range in Iceland, just in a different season and at nighttime, it looks like. So that like never happens when I'm trying to like recreate stuff. I can never find the original images, but this is pretty damn close. And I think it's actually even cooler because it has the Northern Lights here. Um, now, as far as, you know, how I treated this image, I touched it up a little in Photoshop, but I didn't do too much. I just tried to tone down some of the green just because it was like a little too much, I thought. But um, one thing I did is I added the scrim layer. So that's basically just like a gradient that kind of overlays it. So when I turn it off and on, you'll see the difference. I basically just wanted to create a little more contrast for these nav links up top and these slider controls on the bottom. And I also just wanted to tone down that green even further. Um, you know, this designer was able to kind of use this muted imagery, like very muted, warm color palette. I didn't really have that luxury because my image <laughs> is in winter. So, you know, obviously like it's going to have like that cold tone to it. So I sort of just tried to play off that, um, but more or less match the visual style as much as I could. Um, I didn't do too much exploration in trying to find like the exact typography that was used, but I did want to use a nice serif display font. So I used Playfair Display. It's a font I've used before. It's actually a free Google font and I'm pairing it with a sans serif, which is Proxima Nova. So I'm using that like for my nav links and body copy. By the way, if you guys don't know what serifs are, those are like these little tails that appear on these letters here. Whereas sans serif just means without serifs. So I think it's really nice to use these decorative serif fonts for like headlines and then like for your body copy, especially on the web. I, you know, I think this pairing always works well, like a decorative serif paired with a really easy to read sans serif. And I had used uh, Proxima Nova and Playfair Display as a pairing before and I just knew it worked. So, you know, I got pretty close, I think, to the visual style here. I think this font's a little more interesting Got these kind of like triangular serifs as opposed to my more rounded like geometric serifs but you know same same kind of style you could just do a search for playfair display on google fonts and you'll probably um, find some similar fonts and some similar font pairings that you could use to so play around with typography this video is not about typography though it's more about how to bring these static designs to life through motion um, but as you see i just kind of I copied his design. Oh, and by the way, worth pointing out, this designer luckily attached a video, which was super convenient. So thank you, Julio, for doing that because 
that allows me to just, I, I downloaded the video, now I can just scrub through and get a really granular look, like frame by frame at like how things are moving. And basically I was just using this as a reference for my designs. So like, here's a side by side, here's Julio's design, here's mine. So you see, it's like not exact, but it's close enough for all intents and purposes. Um, so yeah, I kind of just, you know, went frame by frame. I didn't find the exact images he used, but I, again, I got pretty close. Like I found this, this uh, person wearing a yellow rain jacket as my subject, which happened to be the exact same thing going on here. Again, I really lucked out with my imagery here. Same thing here, if you scroll all the way to the end. I couldn't find this exact waterfall photo, but it looks like I found a photo of this waterfall, just a different, different angle, so, you know, close enough. Um, again, I wasn't stressing I'm getting this perfect, but yeah, I thought I did pretty well copying for whatever that's worth. Um, by the way, new designers, like get in the habit of copying great designers. Obviously don't take credit for their work, but just like, you know, it helps you figure out like spacing paradigms. Like what I noticed um, when I was, when I was kind of assessing the, this designer spacing, which they clearly did a great job on their spacing. I noticed that elements are spaced in increments of eight apart. So this is basically what we call a soft eight pixel grid. So basically every spacing paradigm, like every spacing distance between items is gonna be divisible by eight for the most part, or at least that's what I found. So I could take a guess that this designer was trying to adhere to some sort of eight point grid, whether that was a hard eight point grid or a soft eight point grid. A hard eight point grid would be something like this, where you know if I turn on my grid, um, the text, like the baseline of these texts would align exactly to these grid lines. And some designers are really particular about doing that. Like, I mean, this is pretty close, right? Um, but it's not exactly on the baseline and that's fine. I'm not really a huge proponent of adhering to a strict baseline grid, but definitely, um, aligning things to a soft a point grid, which is really just the spacing in between elements, I think is you know, a good way to make sure your vertical rhythm is on point. Um, like you see, like this is 40 pixels, which is divisible by eight. These guys are 32 pixels apart. These guys are 16, 24, all divisible by eight. So something, something you might notice just by copying your, you know, your favorite designers, like even these nav links, they're 36 apart. So maybe it was a four point baseline grid. So that's pretty popular to use a four point or eight point baseline grid or soft grid. Um, I'll leave a link below to an article that goes a little deeper into the topic of grids. Again, that's not really what this is about, but I just wanted to kind of let you know it might be a good idea to pay attention to your favorite designer spacing. It might help you improve. So what I'm gonna do here is take this landing page and detail page, copy them, and I'm just gonna create a brand new page here on the left side. Um, I like to do this just in case I mess up. I always like to have my original designs on a separate page when I'm animating. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take the landing page and this detail page. I don't know if we're gonna have time in this video to animate every single interaction and every single page here, but we'll see how long this video gets. I could always do another part to it. But um, let's do this. Let's move detail page over a little bit because there's actually gonna be a little micro interaction that occurs if you watch the video. You see how the user is gonna hover on this read article called action. And then the icon's gonna scale up and rotate 90 degrees and the read article text is just gonna shift over a bit. So that's gonna be on hover. And then obviously they're gonna click that and then we're gonna get this screen wipe transitions, really kind of intricate animation transition here. But let's just do that intermediate step here. So. Again, we want to be thinking what's going to change from screen to screen. So think of each of these screens as a different state of the animation. So this is like the start state here, and this is the end state. So in the end state, let's just create differences in these states so Studio can animate the difference between the similar layers. So I'm going to just scale up this icon here, and we'll just slide over the read article, and we'll space it maybe 12, kind of adhering to that soft four point baseline grid. And then we'll just give this a 90 degree rotation. So those are the differences in the states. And now we just need a way to get from state to state. So I'm actually just gonna make this click area a little larger by drawing a rectangle. And I'm just gonna 
call this hotspot and let's just take its opacity down to zero and then hit C on our keyboard to create a link to landing page one. And this is gonna be a mouse over because it's a hover. We'll have motion selected. And since this is just a hover state, it doesn't have to take that long. I'd say 0.3 seconds max for these types of micro interactions. It's probably fine. You could probably even go a little quicker than that, but let's go to the edit timeline. And when I hit spacebar to play the animation, our elements are animating properly. The only thing we want to do here though is add a bit of easing. So if you notice in our reference, there's a bit of a bounce applied to this icon and you can you know it's bouncing because it sort of almost over rotates and then springs back to its final position. Same thing with this read article. It's it's like moving a little further than its final position and that we know is bounce or elastic or sometimes called spring easing. So I'm just gonna change the global easing here because we're only affecting this and this. That's really the only difference between these two states. And right now it's set to this ease both, which is this acceleration and deceleration or ease in, ease out. I'm just gonna grab this node here and make sure the position, so the Y axis is our position, the X axis is our time of this interaction. So we wanna make sure the position temporarily exceeds the final position of those elements. So that's what we're indicating here. We're exceeding the final position just a bit. So now when I press spacebar, we get a slight subtle bounce on mouse over. So we can actually preview this live. So in our preview, when I hover over, read article, we get this nice bouncy kind of animation, just gives it a little more character. And I'm just pressing Command R to reset. And of course, um, if we wanted to, we could we could do a mouse out to get back here. So I'll hover out to get back to the initial state. But in the interest of time, I'm just going to keep moving. So now let's add a hotspot over this guy, just to make this click target a little long, a little larger. And we'll call this one hotspot click. And for the hell of it, we'll just name this one Hotspot. Hover. And same kind of idea here. We want to take its opacity down, hit C, connect to detail page one. And for now, let's just make the duration like 0.8. We can always adjust this later, hit save. I'm not gonna go to the edit timeline yet because there's still some stuff we have to do. And this is actually the most critical part. So because we're animating from state to state and we want to be able to customize the animations between certain layers, basically the layers that we want to customize with regards to how they animate, they have to be on both screens. So if we look at our reference video, we can get a sense of, you know, which elements need to be on both screens. And it's honestly, most of these elements will need to be on both screens. So let's start with this um, display text here and the journey of the week. Just notice what's happening. So all that's really happening is that's fading out kind of quickly, like right away. So let's take this and this, Command C, Command V, and then in the end state, we know it's gonna fade out. So let's take its opacity all the way down. Now with this text, actually before we do the text, let's copy and paste this hero image and paste it on the end state. And I'm just gonna bump it down in the layer list by hitting Command Option Down until it is behind everything. So of course it looks terrible right now, but basically we want to figure out what's gonna to happen to this background image. So if we look at our reference, the image is scaling up quite a bit. And when I originally saw this, I thought it was maybe fading out, but what's really happening is these like little wiper things that are contributing to the screen wipe transition. They're basically just white rectangles at varying levels of opacity. They're actually sliding over and this one's like starting at like a 30% opacity and probably increasing to like 100. So the only thing that's really happening though to the photo is it's just gonna scale up. So let's just look at how far it scales up. So this is like the largest it gets right there. So let's just try to match the composition 
in this state. So I'm just going to scale it up and then kind of reposition it. And it looks like the scrim layer needs to be a little larger. That's fine. We can just do that. So that's the difference from state to state with regards to the background image. Now we can take this text here. Well, actually, before I do the text, let's work with this. Let's work with these wiper elements. So like these white rectangles. So I actually have to add these to my design. So it looks like it's just two white rectangles that start kind of below this sidebar here and the layer list. So I'm just gonna draw a rectangle here that's the same size of the sidebar for now. And we'll call this one wiper 30. And this one's gonna be white at 30% opacity. And then, so that's, that's this guy, right? It's gonna start kind of behind the, the sidebar and then it's gonna extend and grow the full width of the viewport. But then on top of that, there's gonna be another wiper, which is gonna be white at 100% opacity. So I'm just gonna duplicate this layer and we'll call the one on top wiper 100 and we'll take its opacity all the way up. And now with both of these layers selected, I'm just going to drag them below the blue sidebar so you can't see them initially. So now I'm gonna take both of those layers, control or command C, command V on this page. Make sure they are positioned correctly underneath the sidebar. And I'm just going to grow them to the edge of the viewport because this is where they're gonna end up. Now, once we actually get to the edit timeline, we're gonna have to mess with the timing of those because it looks like this, the white 31 goes first followed by the white 100. But their end state is this. So that's what we did here. We, we just looked at the start state and the end state and then we'll use timing and easing to kind of create that um, time difference to give it the visual interest that we want. Okay, so that's the wipers taken care of. Let's also deal with these navs. So something interesting is happening with these nav bars. So there's actually kind of two versions of the same exact nav. We have the white text and the white icons. And once we tap on read article, those sort of just move up and off the screen. And at a certain point, a new nav drops in with dark blue text and dark blue icons. So as you see in my design, I actually have two different navs. So I, I labeled this one nav one and I labeled this new one nav two. But since these are gonna be animating respectively, they have to be on each of the different screens. So I'm gonna take nav one, paste it onto screen two. I'm gonna move it below nav two in the layer list. And then I'm gonna take nav two and paste it on screen one and let's figure out where it's going to initially start right so this one's going to drop down from the top so initially it needs to be moved up because it's going to go from this state to here in the end state and then same thing same kind of idea with nav one since that's going to be here initially it's going to move up on off the screen in the end state so somewhere around there now this bottom section what i can do is i can just group these together and call this, we'll just call these like hero controls because we have like slider controls and video controls. And if you look at our reference, those just slide off the bottom of the screen. So we'll just take this group we just made, paste it onto screen two and move those off the screen like so. Now we can grab this vertical text and put this on screen one. And this is just gonna move from right to left. So somewhere around here and then fade it out. Because if you look at the reference, that vertical text is just kind of sliding in from right to left once that sidebar is established at the new width. Now we can take the text here. So all this text, we'll grab this divider paste it on screen one and let's just figure out where this starts its upward movement so somewhere around here relative to the viewport so I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this 
So in state one, it's gonna start around here. Let's fade it out initially. So it's gonna fade in and then slide up when it gets to state two. Same kind of idea with the stuff on the right. We have this map, we have this headline. Well, actually, let's see how this stuff comes in. So all these Iceland quick facts are coming at the exact same time. There's actually no stagger between these individual elements. So what I'm gonna do is just group them. So let's grab this. Where's my little divider? This guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, all this stuff. We'll just label this and we'll just name this quick facts. And then, so we have this, this, and this are like the three different elements. And it seems like they enter at slightly different rates. So we have the map followed by the quick facts, followed by the button on the right side. So those are our three different elements that we can copy and paste onto this screen. Now, same kind of idea. Let's figure out where they start relative to the viewport. So somewhere around here. So I'm just gonna eyeball that again, bump things down a bit, and then fade them out. Now, the only other element that needs to be on both screens, I believe, is this back button. So if we look at our reference, just watch how this back button behaves. So we have the read article shifting left and fading out. And then same thing with the back button, it's sort of following that movement. So this back button, let's just kind of overlay on top of this stuff initially. And it looks like my alignment was one, two, three pixels off. So let's just move this up three pixels, one, two, three. And then we'll fade this guy out. And I think we also want to put this read article hot, or sorry, this read article text and the icon below it. So where is that little icon? would let me select it. So these guys need to be on the end state. So I'm just gonna move these over and fade them out. So now all of our elements should be on both screens and Studio is gonna do a lot of the work for us. So you'll see when we go to the edit timeline, once we tap on this read article, call to action, when I hit spacebar, most of the core movement is already done for us. It's just a matter of messing with the timing to make sure everything is animating correctly. So awesome. So before I assess the timing of these layers, I think I'm just gonna change the overall easing from ease both to ease out. And that's because most of this stuff is entering the screen and was not in the user's view prior. So typically when that's the case, we want to decelerate items. And I talk a bit more about this in my, well, definitely in my UI animation course, which is coming out soon, but I did a little uh, overview of this topic in my UI animation basics video, which I'll link on the screen and in the description. But generally objects that enter a screen that are not previously in the user's view, we want to decelerate them. It's just like a smoother way of having them enter a viewport. And since most of, most of this stuff is new to the user, I'm just gonna change the global easing to ease out, so decelerate. And then there's gonna be a few items that I think we can mess with the, the easing of the individual layer. But I think most of these items can be eased out. But I think this, like all the stuff that was previously in the user's view, like the image here, if I go to the beginning of this animation, like this, we'll probably want to ease both. And then same thing with these wipers, it's just because it's gonna sort of follow the same motion as the hero image. So I'm just gonna change these to ease both, ease both. Okay, so I know it looks kind of ugly right now, but now it's just a matter of messing with the timing. So let's just go back to our reference real quick. So watch these wipes. So basically as this, this uh, image scales up, these wipes happen one at a time. So we have the wiper 30 followed by the wiper 100. 
So let's do this. Let's first delay wiper 100 slightly after. And that's looking pretty good to me. Don't pay attention to this text yet. Just look at the background image and these two wipers. I think we got the motion pretty much right. And now right off the bat, we can have this nav delayed and it doesn't need to take that long. This is sort of gonna come in like at the very end once everything's established. And there's a little bit of overhang here with the sidebar. I'm just trying to get rid of that awkwardness. It's still there. Hmm. There we go. That's about right. And now I'm going to have this stuff delayed a bit. So all this text, this divider, paragraph one, paragraph two, delay it. And I'm going to give these a little stagger, but first I just want to get the overall kind of feel down. So then we'll have this column of text. It looks like it's delayed slightly after this first column, right? So the left side comes in, then the right side comes in. So I'm going to take all these and sort of delay them slightly after the left side. That's looking pretty good. I want this Iceland display text and this journey of the week just to fade out a little quicker. And then I want this Iceland vertical text to be delayed. This should still be a little faster, I think. There's no real like formula to this stuff. It's kind of just going by feel. getting closer. <laughs> I think this needs to be a little more delayed, this stuff. Yep, getting closer. And I think there's one thing I need to do. I just want to take a peek at this screen wipe here. So it looks like this wiper 30, it actually ultimately gets to 100% opacity, right? So I think I'm gonna go back to the canvas. Let me save this. Let's find wiper 30. And in the end state, I want it to get to 100 ultimately, because it does increase in opacity. So then let's go back to our interaction. And I'm just gonna delay the time it takes to get to 100% opacity. So let's find wiper 30. Then I'm gonna open the properties of this wiper 30 and then we can control the individual timelines of the individual properties. So I'm actually just gonna delay the opacity a little bit. And maybe we'll also just decrease the time it takes to, to do that. getting there. Still need to delay this stuff a little more. And we'll delay this stuff a little bit after that. Yeah, there we go. Something is weird with this nav one, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I think I'm gonna actually accelerate that off the screen. So generally elements that leave the screen, we wanna accelerate them. So it's the opposite of when elements enter a screen. So when they enter, they decelerate, exit, accelerate. So nav one, since it's leaving the screen, let's find nav one, give this a little ease in. 
So it's easing in to its fastest point or it's accelerating, but it doesn't need to take that long. There we go. That looks so much better. And we can do the same thing with this group down here. What do we call that? The hero controls. Let's just do the same timing, same easing. is just about right. Now we can give this text a little bit of stagger. So I'm gonna stagger the subhead and the divider a little bit after the headline. Same thing with this, a little bit after those guys. And then same thing with P2, a little bit after. So guys, I think we're just about done. I mean, one thing I'll do actually is give this a little stagger. So this quick facts, we'll stagger it a bit after the map and then we'll stagger the button a bit after that. Maybe a little more exaggerated. There we go. Yeah, just these subtle time differences just create a little more depth and a little more visual interest. I think I'm just gonna make this wiper 100 take a little bit longer. Well, maybe not. I think the problem is this needs to be, or sorry, not wiper 100. This needs to be delayed maybe a little more. There we go. just compare with our reference. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty damn close. I mean, obviously we can't get it exact. I don't know what this, this designer did in After Effects because they clearly made this in After Effects, not Studio, but I mean, the principles are more or less the same, right? And I think this is pretty damn close. And the benefit of this of course, is that it's completely interactive. So I could actually put this in the hands of a client or a user to test. I can hover. Actually, I think this is this should be a click, not a hover, right? Yep, so let's make this click. And there we go. And I can just do Command R to reset. So again, like you can spend as much time as you want really perfecting this, but that's the gist of it. And I think we got pretty damn close to our original design. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Um, of course, I could go on and animate the rest of this. And if that's something you guys would like to see, drop a comment below. I know this video is already pretty long, so maybe we'll save that for another day. But the principles are more or less the same as what I showed you. And the animation I just showed you was by far the most in intricate out of all of these. Um, so again, thank you for the question. Who was it? Her Hieronymus Agung. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Thank you for the question. And thank you to Julio Cosquido for the really awesome design inspiration. I love your work, man. Hopefully I did this justice in studio. Um, I'll be on your level one day, I promise. But, uh, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed this, found this valuable, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Uh, share it if you want. Um, subscribe for more of these videos. Also, make sure you fill out that UI animation survey below um, because I am releasing my UI animation course later this year and I'd love to hear your thoughts and kind of what you guys want to see in this course. Um, I've already got a few modules completed, so stay on the lookout for that. Um, you can email me if you have any questions, drop comments below, yada, yada, yada. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.